Good morning, everyone. I hope you're here for the LIU Learn On webinar on free resources for phys ed, health, and all the specials. I'm trying to hit art, music, and tech ed if I possibly can in this particular webinar. Um, my name is Nicole Bont. I work for the Lincoln Intermediate Unit, and I'm an educational technology specialist. I'm going to put the slide deck in today's chat so that you can access it here really quickly. All right. So, if this is your first time at one of our Lincoln Intermediate Unit Learn On webinars, you'll notice there are some repeat slides that we like to go over at the beginning of every single series. So I am going to go through those. I have changed a couple of little things, though, that you may have noticed. Um, well, you may notice <laughs> as we move along. So this is my contact information here highlighted. If you'll notice, um, this is our entire team. Uh, this is a cross-divisional work the entire Learn On uh, webinar series and the website. So educational services, our special education group, and our, um, and our educational technology services all work together to create the webinars, host the webinars, and put that website together. So we've all been collaborating quite a bit over the last few weeks. And I hope that probably at your districts, you're doing the same. So this is a different kind of Zoom room. This is a Zoom webinar room. So it has some slightly different settings that I'd like to go over. So the first one here says that the chat microphone and camera have been disabled. So yes, the microphone and the camera have been disabled, but I'm going to let you in on a secret because we're below 30 participants right now. I opened up the chat. So if you would like to post anything in the chat, you can probably select all panelists, which is me, um, or all panelists and attendees if you want to post anything into the chat as we're going. Uh, one of the reasons is because it's a slightly smaller group. And another reason is because I might actually want some feedback from you. I have a lot of material to cover and I want to make sure I'm best meeting your needs. Um, so for instance, if I'm going over this and nobody in here is an art teacher, then I might be able to skip the art slide <laughs> as we're going. So if you do have questions though, it's really, really, really nice if you can post them in the q and I've got a lot going on across my two screens here from the presentation to the chat, to the Q&A and to a couple other resources so I can pull links if I need to really fast. So if you find that you have a specific question you want to make sure I answer, Putting it in the Q&A is the best way to do it. I'll try to answer it live if I see it pop up. Ah, great, I see a music teacher from Gettysburg. If you guys would like to let me know what it is that you teach so that I can have an idea as I go here, I'm just gonna go over all of the basics of the webinar. So if you could throw in your subject, um, your grade level, just give me an idea of the gamut of what you teach so that I can show you some specific resources to meet your needs and maybe jump over anything that you wouldn't need. Second grade, ooh, wellness, phys ed in high school, middle school, Ooh, choral and general music, health, 9th through 12th, fabulous. I will check on you guys as I continue through my norms here. At the end, if, I, if you would like to comment or share anything, I'm going to ask that you raise your hand. You'll see this little hand button down here, and I can unmute or give you the ability to unmute your microphone. And at the end, just a reminder, we're going to push out that Act 48 credit link, so you might want to stick around. That's when I end this. I see middle school phys ed. I see choral and general music, K through it. 12 art special education, six through nine physical education, adapted K through 12, six through eight, nine through 12 library, family consumer sciences, fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. Okay, special education, high school phys ed. See a couple of different ones all in there, guys. Great, high school life skills, phys ed. All right, I'm gonna get to the phys ed stuff. I'm actually really excited about the phys ed stuff for as difficult as it seems, it also isn't. I'm, I don't know, there's just a lot of resources out there. So I'll keep moving real fast. All right, so our LIU resources, that's the Act 48 reminder. You'll need your PPID here at the end. This is for PA educators only. If you're not, we're glad to have you, but we can't give you Act 48. Webinar archives are linked here, as well as on our resource site, which is learnon.iu12.org. Some of the changing expectations for learning. So, just a reminder that less is more and it's important to prioritize as we move on. Whatever it is you thought you were going to teach, I keep telling everyone to cut it in half, then cut it in half again. Because to be honest, we are quickly mobilizing to get our work online. And that means that we may have to cut, prioritize, and balance. If you're using video, and I am talking really specifically especially to my physical education teachers. There is so much opportunity with video. If you are using video, um, the importance of including your face is, I cannot ex express it enough. Your students maybe haven't seen you in a couple of weeks and maybe they might act like they don't wanna see you, um, but they do, they really do. 
Additionally, when possible, we wanna to try to keep the length no more than six minutes. Now that said, I think that we can sometimes make an exception. So for instance, if I were a phys ed teacher and I were explaining like a routine or setting up like an entire fitness like piece, maybe yoga for 15 minutes, um, I would obviously go beyond six minutes, but that might be, be because of the nature of the particular lesson that I'm doing, if it's actually a physical education lesson. And again, I might, you know, break it into a couple of chunks, like do one piece of it, stop, do another piece of it so students can click on them in different orders or out of order or can do it in a sequence or stop and start if need be. I would like to remind you that it's important to really express your objectives and expectations. Being clear right up front is really going to empower your students. They know when they log in exactly why they're doing something. Um, if they don't have a why, then why are they logging in? Um, and that's going to be more compelling for them to actually try to attempt a task. Trying to be very clear with your objectives and expectations for each of your students. Identify the time you think it might take to complete this task. Um, sometimes you can look at a task and say, oh, this should only take 15 minutes. When a student's logging in, um, knowing that, hey, I can do this in 10 minutes, or hey, I need to block out an, a half an hour of time to get through this, is going to be important, especially when possibly when students are using multiple devices, or there's only one device and multiple students are using it in a home, or because they might not be logging in at 8 a.m., they might be logging in at 6 a.m. when mom and dad get off the computer because they're working from home. So these are considerations that we need to keep in mind. And lastly, the importance of organizing and sequencing your instructions. Whenever possible, try to offer a checklist for the student and the parents so they know exactly what needs to get done and in what order. It really simplifies things if there's just a simple checklist either at the beginning or the end so students know exactly what they need to do. If you need more information about our best practices, you're gonna find it right there at the bottom. So our webinar outcomes. My goal is to identify content resources for phys ed, health, and other specials. I feel really weird calling them specials. I feel like every single one is super important. So I do want you to keep that in mind as we go through their specials, but they're not really specials. Okay, lastly, this uh, webinar is short. Um, I'm trying to get through this in 20 to 30 minutes and I find I keep running over. So one of the things I want you to keep in mind as we go through it, if you need additional information from me or additional tutorials, or maybe I don't hit your topic as well as you thought maybe you were gonna get out of this webinar, uh, please reach out to me. I can pull more resources and put something together if you're looking for something specific. Additionally, if you have a tech or an instructional coach, they will love to help you. They may be super busy right now, um, but they would love to help you. So again, my email is nabond at iu12.org. So if you're looking for something specifically like family consumer science and you wanna do something with finance, since that seems like the best thing to do during this time period, please reach out to me. I can give you some resources. I can find some if I don't have any linked right now. That's my thing. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna get into is the idea of physical activity. You can hear, <laughs> I live near some traffic. Um, and there are actually some, some children outside getting some physical activity, and that includes going like this for, for horns for trucks. Um, so physical activity, when it comes to this, we're dealing with a lot of screen time right now with students. Um, and I, so I, I don't even hesitate to say that this is so important. I think a lot of times um, when districts are thinking about pulling all of their material online, um, the importance of getting all that content onto um, whether it's an LMS or how it's going to be given out is important, but I think sometimes this gets a little overlooked and it is important to help our students understand how to prioritize their screen time and that they really shouldn't be sitting here in front of a screen all day, that there should be some type of physical activity going on as well. Um, especially since we are still allowed to go outside into yards if we have them, or we can even work out in our own homes. Um, and it's so easy to do right now. Uh, so many different venues are actually putting their content online. For instance, um, I live in Hanover, so the YMCA is literally on Facebook posting their classes online for anyone. So if you're following them on Facebook, you can get a YMCA class live streamed in many cases. Um, so just the idea of going into social media and searching some of your local um, gym local gyms or YMCA's, YWCA's, you might be surprised at what's live streaming locally that you can use for your classroom or that might give you some ideas about what you wanna use in your classroom. I also will encourage you to simply go into YouTube and search for fitness routines to share. So if you wanna find something, maybe there's a particular yoga move or there's a particular um, piece you wanna cover, going to YouTube is gonna have a lot of that 
material for you that you can link into whatever management system that you may be using. The idea of having students create and post fitness journals is also something that I've been seeing a lot lately in um, a number of my social media platforms. A lot of uh, physical education teachers are asking students to keep a fitness journal. Like, how are you moving every day? Because we are all confined in many ways. How are you taking advantage of the fact that the sun's shining and it's almost 70 degrees? Or, or what are you doing for physical activity? So a couple of the links that I put in here, the first one I put in is actually Go Noodle. If you're familiar with Go Noodle, it is a lot of fun. They have a lot of different resources in there, but I really enjoy the physical activity element. And I will be honest, it seems like it's niched right towards elementary, but I have used Go Noodle with eighth graders and they love being silly. So I'm gonna go in here just because Go Noodle is very much aware of their current situation. they should come up and they actually have the information for you to send home so that students and children can log in to go noodle so if you look at go noodle it's tranquil tuesday oh and they already have a a stretch and an activity here and they're very short activities but they're nice to be able to share so you can send it right to your Google Classroom. If you have a Google Classroom, you can send it via Remind. You can just send a link, however you would like to send a link, get the link. Or if you're using a social media platform, you can share it that way. So very, very nice. You can share it with parents or other teachers that way. So I think you can invite parents right there. So once you set up your account, you can set up classes. And I used to use this in my classroom for brain breaks with my eighth graders. If we were doing a really awesome job, I'd be like, all right guys, we're gonna do Go Noodle. And they were so excited. I don't know if Go Noodle was around when they were in elementary school, but, but they just loved the silliness of it and the fact that they could get up and move. Especially for me, I was an ELA teacher for seventh and eighth grade and that meant a lot of times kind of sitting and writing and reading. So the idea of getting up and moving was really, really exciting. Um, I see Jonas, these are good ideas even for my kindergarten daughter at home. These are great ideas for anybody. In fact, I'm not gonna lie, I may have looked at one or two of these and done these as brain breaks for myself. Sitting here doing webinars in between my webinars, I'll get up and do like a dance or something hilarious. <laughs> so the invite parents link is right here. And you'll notice there's a PDF that you can send out. So you could actually print it out and send it home in packets if you were doing this as a printable, a printable activity. So, just look at the PDF real fast here. So it explains here the video app and the games app and where to get it and gives all the details in here for parents, which I think is really, really, really nice. Um, so this is a great resource. The nice thing is that it's small and it's bite-sized. Like it isn't going to be a 30 minute activity. These are really quick, fun, goofy, uh, game-like um, things to do. You do this with your high school kids, that's fabulous. That brings me joy. <laughs> I love to hear that the high, schools, high schoolers are still not too, they're not too cool for Go Noodle. Some of them are just ridiculous. Like there's Catman, he wears a cat mask and does really strange things. It's just fun and you know it's safe because it's really made for kids. So it's not like going out to YouTube and finding a funny one. You can do that. Yes, you could use it for part of your middle school choral warm ups. This would be a lot of fun. And they have songs in here too that you can sing along with. I, I totally go in here and investigate. The dancing bear is hilarious. You know, some of them are brainer size, some of them are guided dance, call and repeat. Like you see, they give you an idea if it's a full workout and what it is it's asking you to do. So I'm gonna go back to my slide because I've only clicked on one thing and we are 15 minutes in. All right, let me get us in here. So Orange Theory, for those of you who are maybe a little more like, okay, silly's fun, but let's get serious. Orange Theory is posting literally a video a day. Now, I would suggest that you preview this and make sure that it's appropriate for your students. I do not live in an area where there is an Orange Theory. I have a lot of friends who do and they just swear by it. So I do wanna share with you that Orange Theory is doing this. It is made for adults, but I think it really could be repurposed if you were interested in sending out something like this as far as physical activity. Um, but again, I'm gonna encourage you to really look at what your local gyms are doing. Um, for me, I'm in Hanover. So if you're anywhere near me in Hanover, you'll know we have the YMCA, they're posting, the Hanover YMCA is posting a lot of things. I would imagine that the Gettysburg YW might be doing the same. 
Um, I know that the yoga studio, studio here in Hanover has been doing some live yoga meditation and that sort of thing as well. I would even say like at a high school level, I would ask the students to find local routines that they'd be willing to share and make it more of a collaborative effort. Like, hey, what can you find online that is being posted by anybody in Pennsylvania as physical activity to share out with you versus you curating all of it yourself? See, Angie said on YouTube, the YUSA has a channel called YMCA 360. That's fabulous. So YouTube has so much material when it comes to physical activity. I came across cow, core power yoga as well. I'd say middle secondary. So all of these are fabulous resources when it comes to physical activity. Um, some of them are live streaming at a certain time. It's actually happening live. And sometimes they record it, sometimes they don't. So I would just do some investigating um, on the physical activity front. There is tons out there. And I think the idea of getting our students moving um, and it's really gonna break that stereotype I think is coming with the idea of us moving our um, curriculums online is that the stereotype is that they're going to sit in front of a screen for eight hours a day. One, they should not be sitting in front of a screen for eight hours. Nobody should be giving that much material. But two, offering these breaks may actually entice students to log on. If you're having that kind of reluctance where, hey, I'm putting my stuff there, but nobody's going on. Well, if you're doing fun and physical movement, you might find that uh, more students will log on just to access that material initially. So this is some of the physical activity. I have a couple of different categories in here. I want to hit social emotional learning. One of the things I want to bring up is EverFi. EverFi has a ton of material on it for free. Um, their wellness course is free, but I believe their financial course is also free if you're looking at finances for my, for my family consumer science. They focus on eighth through 12th grade for this particular wellness course. I'm gonna click on it so we can go out to it. I apologize if, my, if I keep blowing up your screen and then shrinking it, it's not my intention at all. So in EverFi, this is preparing students for wellness and mental health education. That's not what I wanted to do, but. Let's close some things out and see if we can get back to where I wanna be. So they have tons of free digital resources in here. Their mental health and wellness one is free and hits the national health standards as well as the CASEL social and emotional learning competencies. I'm gonna go up here to the top though to show you their course library. So you see here, they also have financial education, health and wellness, career readiness. I'm going to go to see all so you can get an idea. And I do believe everything on here is pretty much free. So K through 12 financial literacy, financial literacy for elementary, K through 12 STEM career exploration for middle school, digital literacy for wellness and safety. So if you're looking for course ideas and content ideas, college and career readiness, bullying prevention, alcohol awareness, healthier me. So we've got pages and pages of resource in EverFi. I really suggest if you were looking for any of these, these pieces, like I might go take this one myself. <laughs> Though I don't know if right now is the best time to invest. Um, prescription drug safety, mental wellness basics, compassion project, just tons of different pieces in here that are worth checking out for different grade levels. And they identify the grade levels over here on the side to give you an idea of what you might want to use and with whom. So those are the courses under the course library. You can just sign up right here. They have additional resources. They partner with businesses, nonprofits, and sports entertainment, and that's how they offer it for free. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at it. So that's EverFi. Karoon Learning also has a ton of free, free resources right now. So, I don't know if that's linked up there, but you'll get the idea down through here. So you need to put in a course request form though, if you're going to use them. They have 
these for different school levels. So they have health and personal wellness, fitness fundamentals and nutrition, middle school health, middle school phys ed, K through one health, two through three, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a form that you need to fill out for the request, but you can access the Corone materials in here too at Corone Learning. And I think there's one more, yes. And then lastly, if you aren't aware, Newzella has some social emotional learning tech sets. So if you are already using Newzella, or even if you aren't, it's now free and open for the COVID closures. So as a former ELI teacher, I am a little bit partial to Newzella. Newzella goes right into your Google Classroom. You can link it directly. and they have full social emotional learning text sets for each grade level and for a variety of subjects. So even if you are in elementary art and design, they have a social emotional learning with elementary art and design. So these are all articles or stories that have to do with social emotional learning and that particular subject or content area. So to get to that, I went to text sets and SEL. So here's text sets. If you do have a login and you end up going into New ZLA, this is where text sets are. And you'll notice social emotional learning elementary, social emotional learning high school and middle school. And all you have to do to sign up when you go into New Zella, there'll be an orange banner at the top advertising the COVID openings. You can just sign in as a, as a teacher and it'll automatically set up your login. It's really, really quick. Um, maybe takes five minutes to set up a login to get in here. When you are in here, if you want to add classes, it's under settings with my profile here. And if I go to classes, I can sync it from Google or I can create my classes and give my students class codes and join them in that particular way. There are kind of comprehension questions and vocabulary starters in there. I'm not gonna go deep dive into Newzella. It's just one resource that might be of interest to you. And again, elementary, middle, and high. I'd say it goes from about first grade through 12th grade. All right, some specifics for art. I, I love the fact that a lot of illustrators, and again, if you've got an illustrator, especially like a children's book illustrator that you really like, a lot of them are doing illustration tutorials on YouTube. So definitely search some of your favorite illustrators when it comes to children's book and see if they've already posted some, some live streaming things or if there's something else. Um, you could also have, again, your students curate. Like have your students look for great videos on drawing and share what they've learned and make them personalize it. So have the students find their own videos and attempt whatever is in it and then share that maybe in Flipgrid would be a way that I would maybe structure a lesson just to keep it different so that it's very personalized. The students are looking for something that they want to learn about. So that would be one option. Those are kind of up here in this yellow piece. Some of the resources that I have in here are Doodles Academy, which is a grades one through five art curriculum, Picture Dots, which is pre-K through three, and it's an iPad app, so it's only iPad specific. I also included Mark Kistler's free webcasts. So these are drawing webcasts, kind of similar to what I was suggesting up at YouTube. And CK12 actually has digital photography lessons. I think it's more at a high school level, but that, what, that would be kind of interesting and exciting to kind of spend the, the entire time that you're not physically in school documenting digital photography wise, what's really occurring during this quarantine. So just a thought, maybe doing like a digital photography journal or even a digital art journal of some kind where students document the art that they get done related to the situation, if you would like. So I'm just gonna click on Doodles Academy to give you an idea what that looks like here. So Doodles. has free art projects in here. And I don't think they're all digital. I think some of them can be kind of like printed and sent as well. So I think this is an example. I 
and you can go down here and kind of access it by your interest. So first, second, third, I'm just gonna click on third randomly. So this one looks, I like Toy Story, that's why I'm clicking on that one. But it has all of these different art projects that you could share just by sharing a link to it um, or use it as an example. So there's a project overview, a scope and sequence. They do ask you to enroll, but this is also something that can later be repurposed when we are back in our classrooms and you could still utilize, I think, in your classroom. So just a resource that I thought might be useful, especially our, our K through uh, five group. I'm gonna click on these photography lessons because I think it's kind of neat and it's kind of hidden. So I wanna make sure I show you where it is. So CK-12, and this goes for everyone, doesn't matter what your content area is, this is like a free textbook. So if you know anybody looking for textbooks, this is a great place for them to go, looking for a digital textbook because they know that their students don't necessarily have them with them, um, or you don't maybe even have your teacher copy at home, or maybe there isn't a digital copy available. So you'll notice that science, math, and social studies are all in here in multiple content areas. We've got multiple grade levels of science, math, social studies, but down here is photography and they have digital imaging one, digital imaging two and photography down here, which I thought was kind of an interesting, an interesting resource. So right now I'm not in the teacher version. I'm, I think I'm in the student version, but I just wanna give you an idea what it looks like. So it's a full textbook um, from basic photo composition all the way through honors assignments. So if you were looking for something to pull from, you could use this as a resource and just pull the pieces that you want your students to look at and read over. And it's, it has examples, explanations, and they just kind of page through it like a digital textbook. So CK through 12 is a great place for some secondary resources. Because I noticed we had a couple of art and a couple of music. So music, there are a couple of resources in here for music. The cool thing about music right now, and maybe it's just me because I like listening to music, maybe not as much as creating, or at least I enjoy creating, but I'm not very, I don't consider myself very talented at creating music. <laughs> Um, is the fact that there is a ton of virtual concerts and music events that can be live streamed. So I have included the virtual concert list from NPR right now, as well as music events and live streams from Billboard. Now, I would expect you to use your best judgment on maybe where you direct your students. I think the NPR list is going to be more um, like violin and that sort of thing when I looked at it last. Oh, they just updated it today. Fabulous. So today, you can go to the violin channel and see violinists and cellists. The Met Opera has opened up most of their work. Uh, you can get some Bach, the jazz, there's a jazz festival. So there's just tons of different unique things that maybe your students wouldn't have seen otherwise um, listed in here. And that's just, I just scrolled through all of that and that was just today. So like you can see April 8th, so just a thought, food for thought, if you're looking for a music resource and they've labeled it classical, multi-genre, folk, indie, children's music even. So this might be a fun resource. And some of these, they're live, but they're also recording them and sharing them somewhere else. So I would encourage you to click and explore, see if it's gonna be recorded and shared elsewhere. I know some of them, when they share them on Facebook are then kept on Facebook and they can be resourced later. Um, this is fun. This one is in Minecraft. So a rock nether mint festival in Minecraft. So just things to think about, different resources to maybe explore. Um, music theory has middle and high school lessons as well as some exercises and tools. Uh, Chrome Music Lab, I really love. I don't know if you've ever explored Chrome Music Lab, um, but it's just really a bunch of tools. You'd have to think about how you want to implement them and use them for what it is you want to cover. Um, but each of the tools kind of has a difference. So this is a song maker. This one's rhythm. This is a spectrogram, chords, melody, 
I don't know what that is, Kandinsky, I'm sorry, music isn't my forte. I do know arpeggios, sound waves. So I'm gonna go over here to rhythm because when I did play, I was in the rhythm section. So you can have students creating music in here. Ah, uh, there's a couple of different. So that's an idea of what is in the music lab. It's a lots of like music experiment kind of um, interactive pieces, harmonics, piano roll, oscillators. So just something to explore. Kandinsky is a visual artist. Oh, well, we're gonna click on Kandinsky. We have a minute here. Not really sure what this one does. Ooh, that's pretty. Oh. I bet they're different sounds. Something different. So worth exploring. Interesting tool. Draw a circle and it makes a face and a voice in Kandinsky. Really? Okay, we gotta do a different color then. <laughs> All right, that just made my day. This is really cool. <laughs> All right, not to get entirely sidelined from where we were going. If you want to check out, that's the Chrome Music Lab. Lots of experience in there. Um, and music theory is another place that I would check out if I were in music. Tech Ed, I think, is one of those harder ones because you're dealing with the, the hands-on, like, let's be honest, our students may or may not have saws at home. They may or may not have the tools in order to do things. So some of these resources um, pulled here are the ITEEA resources. This is just a whole bucket load of places for you to sort through if you are in tech ed or looking for a piece um, on the tech ed level. So mid-March they began compiling. So bringing STEM to life, 2020 Amazon future engineer. So there's tons of just different things in here to sort through to see if any of them are going to meet your needs. Um, as far as like do-it-yourself toy making, I think the idea of having students do um, recycled pieces is kind of fun at this point because a lot of us are stuck at home um, with our stuff. So that idea of being creative with what you have versus going out to purchase things, which we shouldn't be doing, um, with what you have to create a toy or to create something that is a piece of art or along those lines. I really have been enjoying seeing what a lot of students are doing with kind of found items or even the idea of when you're dealing with digital photography, going back to art, the idea of arranging a picture out of found items versus painting. Um, so there's a lot of different creative ideas out there and different resources that I have come across. So tech ed could be a tricky one, especially when there were certain things that you wanted to hit before the end of the year involving the tools that you may have had. So just, I would suggest going through this particular resource and then the second one, Instructables, does have some resources as well. A lot of maker resources. So if you were looking at ideas for maker resources. A lot of these are 3D printed pieces. And the thing about 3D printing is that students can still do some designing even if they can't do the printing right now. So if you find that you're looking kind of in that area, like, oh, we were going to be 3D printing at this point, thinking about how you could maybe modify that so that maybe at least they're designing if they're not actually printing, if you're working at that level. So one of the things I do want to point out to you is that we have a massive list of content resources on our website. I'm going to take us out there real fast in case you haven't been there. Um, if you have a resource that I haven't gone over that you're like, this is the coolest resource for this and you didn't include it um, and it's not listed in here, by all means, email me and let me know and I can stick it in here. Um, we are constantly modifying and updating this particular website, art and music. You guys have a nice long list. I did not go through every single thing in that list because unfortunately we just wouldn't have the time. 
um, career and education. I can't express to you enough if you are looking at career and education, if you're thinking about financial resources, uh, EverFi has some great financial um, literacy stuff in there too. Smart Futures also has some great career planning. So if you're working with careers, coding in CompSci, and we have the health, phys ed, and emotional wellness. And there's even other stuff in here that I didn't go through. Does anybody have any particular questions because we are winding ourselves to a close here. I hopefully have shown you a lot of different tools and different ways to use some of those tools. Perhaps maybe you got some ideas, I hope, from this webinar of different ways that you can use some of the online tools um, to create in your classroom. Um, if you don't have any questions right now, please feel free to reach out to me. I am again, N.A. Bond at iu12.org. And I will happily search for more resources if there's something in particular you're looking for and I will try to send it your way. I am gonna put my Act 48 form and evaluation in there. Um, once I close out this webinar, it should immediately redirect you there to that Act 48 form, but I just wanna make sure you have it just in case. It's also on the Learn On website. I wanna thank you guys for joining me here this morning and I hope that if you're sticking around